So the most important thing and the thing that I think is really nice is how easy it is to spin up these apps. So if we go to one click apps here, there is a lot of options to choose from. I recently took to the community page for my YouTube channel to ask for some applications that need a little bit of love. Now, there's a lot of really good things in here, but one that stood out to me was uh, IRL Create posted here, Cap Rover. Protainer on drugs, best for home labs, little servers, one-click Docker apps. I love me a good one-click app, so I went ahead, checked it out. This is their install page. If we head over to their homepage, we get a better idea of what it is. What's this? Cap Rover is an extremely easy to use app database deployment and web server manager to manage a variety of different types of applications. It uses Docker Nginx and let's encrypt with a simple, easy to use user interface. And I did play around with it for a little bit and it seems to be kind of like a using Docker without using Docker. And you'll kind of see what I mean a little bit later. App deployment made easy. Who is it for? It's for developers who don't like spending hours a day setting up server build tools, setting code to server, getting SSL certificates, installing it, updating Nginx and all that. So basically it does a lot of the backend heavy lifting stuff when developing applications or my personal favorite, it allows people like me to spin up applications super easy, which I'm gonna show you right about now. I went ahead over to Linode, which is sponsoring today's video. Use the create tool to set up a Linode under their marketplace. I just selected Docker, so it's kind of pre-installed and ready to go. That's one of the prerequisites for this application. And I used the uh, domain name API token here, which if I go over to hopkey.net DNS records, you could see right there, it's cap and then the domain name. Now, if I go over here, let's go back to the installation page. Uh, your prerequisites are your domain name, of course. We have our server, which for this case, we are going to be using Linode, which if you use the link, which if you use the link down below, you get a $100 six day credit. I love Linode, I've been using it forever. Super easy, set up a wide variety of Linux servers, or you could use one of the one-click installers like I did in this instance to get Docker set up. And then here it says you're going to need Docker on your server, there's some instructions there, and then we're gonna to need to configure our firewall. And to do that, I'm gonna go back over to our Linode here, grab our IP address, pull in a terminal, and then SSH in. So SSH, my username, and then the IP address. Yes, this is me. Type in a password. Oh, that was wrong. Type in a password. And there we go. We are now, oh. The first thing you wanna do with any Linux server is of course, update, upgrade. So let's do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Hit enter, type this in again and install our updates. Now, while it does that in the background, we are going to go back over here and grab this command to update our firewall settings. This is allowing various ports, including general HTTP, HTTPS traffic, as well as some additional ports required by a Docker and Cap Rover, et cetera, et cetera. So let's jump over here and wait for this to finish up. Is it done yet? Oh, it's pretty damn close. Okay, and before we do the firewall rules, I'm gonna show you how to, you can see your rules. So it's sudo UFW or UFW is the default tool used in uh, at least uh, Ubuntu that I'm aware of. So sudo UFW status, you can see we just have the 22 port, which I believe is for SSH. But what we're gonna want to do is sudo and paste in this command, which will allow just about everything. Oh, I thought I'm pretty sure I am root. Oh, I'm gonna add a sudo here as well. There we go. So now if I do status, you'll see the updated rules here. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it better. There we go. And now since we have Docker installed and you could always check that Docker dash V to see the version of Docker you have installed, we're gonna grab this uh, cap rover installation. Docker run, it's gonna put this on the port 8443 as well as the port 3000 and here's everything. So let's paste this in here, sudo as well. There are ways to run Docker without having to do sudo. I'll link to some additional documentation down below but we're just trying to get this uh, fired up. So it's gonna go ahead and pull all my images and then extract them all. There we go, it's gonna check our uh, compatibility, Docker, Ubuntu, x86, 
total RAM. This is running on the uh, $5 Linode. It's uh, one gig of RAM, I believe. Uh, if I go over here, create Linode shared. Yeah, one CPU core, 25 gigs of storage, a terabyte of bandwidth, not too bad for five bucks a month. And there we go, it's initializing. It says, please wait at least 60 seconds before trying to access it, which I'm gonna show you how to do. Let's head back over here. And the one thing that we need to do is connect our root domain. Now I mentioned earlier that I already used the Linode API to do this, but it doesn't do it exactly how they want you to do it. You need to use a wild card. So you're gonna to need to go into whatever domain thing you're using, whether it be on the node, you're using Google domains, Namecheap, GoDaddy, whatever. And you're gonna to want to add an A record. You can see I already have the A record here for the cap subdomain pointing to the proper IP address, but I'm gonna to have to give this a little edit. And in front of cap, which is what I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna add an asterisk and dot. This will allow it to create new subdomains within this part. So let's hit save, there we go. I wouldn't worry about IPv6. And if I go back to getting started, now we are gonna want to do this on our local system. So we are gonna need to use npm install g cap over. This is gonna be a local CLI setup tool. So connect to your local terminal instance, npm. Uh, yes, we want to go ahead and install this. Uh, yes, let's continue. There we go, so now npm. Enter, and it's installed. So now we can paste in this command, npm install cap over. Gonna run this as a sudo user. And there we go, it's gonna pull our uh, CLI utility to get this all set up. And there we go. So now the actual setup command, where is it? Is cap over or cap rover server setup. So cap rover server setup, right? Wrong, setup, enter. So here we go, have we set up the container? Yes, we have. Let's paste in our IP address. So I'm gonna grab it from right here again, copy that, and then let's paste it in, boom, hit enter. And now our root domain, in my case, it's gonna be cap.hopkey.net, hit enter. And if it does proceed to this step, that means it is set up, it detected it. So let's give us a password. There we go. Valid email address. This is going to do all the let's encrypt and SSL certificates and everything for us. Which if you've ever tried to set up an SSL certificate on Docker and you're not too experienced with uh, Nginx and reverse proxies, this is very nice. There we go. Name our local machine. So I'm just going to call it uh, cap. And there we go. So now it's available at captain.caphopkey.net. I'm gonna copy this because otherwise it's gonna try to open in Firefox. Copy, go over here and let's paste it in. Oop, enter. And you can see it's working. It has HTTPS enabled. Let's type in our password and here we are. It's so really not a lot going on. Here we could create new applications or select from the one-click apps. If we go under dashboard, really not a lot going on here. You have the option to change your root domain. Monitoring, you can see the active connections request, but if you want a lot more, we can start the uh, net data engine. So if I start that up, there we go. And we can scroll down. We can enable email notifications if we'd like to, or we can just open up net data. And here we have a lot of cool or useful information about our Linode that we have up and running. There we go. So let's close this out. And we have cluster options. So if you're familiar with uh, clusters and Docker, this might be a, a benefit for you under settings. Again, not a lot going on. We have updates, backups, some Nginx configuration and an uh, option to change your password. So the most important thing and the thing that I think is really nice is how easy it is to spin up these apps. So if we go to one click apps here, there is a lot of options to choose from, including audiobook shelf. I made a video about that recently really cool application. Scroll down, basically all of these are really nice. We have Discourse, wonderful form software. Uh, keep going down, FileZilla, Firefox, uh, Focal Board is nice, Ghost is what I'm actually using for TechCut.tv at the moment. We got Guacamole, a whole bunch of stuff, which all, a lot of these are available in the Linode one-click installers too, but a lot of those don't really deploy uh, in containers. We have Joomla, uh, we're, let's test this out with uh, Wiki.js. I think that's closer to the bottom. But you can see we have Plausible here, which is super cool. Plex, uh, let's keep going, keep going. Radar, which I've I've recently gotten into that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And where is it? There it is, Wiki.js. This one has a limited options, so this is a really easy example. I'm just gonna call it Wiki. And with that app name, that's gonna be your subdomain. We have some database stuff, but if I just go ahead and click deploy, 
It's going to run through the progress and tell you what's going on as it does it. And then it's going to go ahead and spin it up. And there we go. It is deployed in ports and it may take up to two minutes for it to be ready. Let's finish. And here, back under apps, it's where it took us. We have wiki and wiki progress. So both the wiki and the database. And we have open here. So if I open this up, here we are. So I could set up my admin email, give ourselves a password, and then our site URL, which is just going to be uh, this right here. There we go. And click install. There we go. Click install. And the installation is complete. And just like that, we have our very own instance of a uh, wiki JS here so we're logging in but you'll notice one thing if I go let's just go to administration real quick so it looks a little better uh, not secure part of the thing that makes um, cap rover really cool is the SSH keys and to enable that all we need to do is go back to our apps page click on wiki it will bring up some of the specific settings for this, including the ability to edit the Nginx configurations, enable WebSocket support, bunch of cool stuff here. We have app config, we have deployment, but under H, but right here under HTTP settings, all we need to do is click on enable HTTPS and give it just a minute to go ahead and think about that. And there we go, HTTPS is now enabled. So if we go back to our app and let's go ahead and add that in. So HTTPS, enter, booyah, we now are in a secure connection. So that's really how easy it is to set up applications with this thing, as well as enabling our SSL certificates. And just for another example, a application I hold dear to my heart is Nextcloud. So here we could actually search for specific applications. So if I go Nextcloud, boom, we have the name of the app. So I'm just gonna call it Nextcloud, super creative. And then here we have the version numbers. We have the database users and passwords. So I'm gonna just keep this as admin. Let's go uh, temp pass one, two, three. Protocol for the proxy, we're gonna keep this as HTTPS and I'm gonna leave host names blank for now. Let's deploy that. And it's just gonna run through the exact same, not exact same, but it's gonna run through the, uh, the progress for us. And there we go, it's deployed, it's created the volumes. And now we are good to go. And it actually gives us some tips and tricks to go in and get better performance out of it. So if you are gonna use this as your installation, I'd definitely read that and follow those instructions. But let's click finish. Here we can see all the apps it threw up, including the cron database. But if I open up Nextcloud here, we could see some of this information. If we go to our site currently, it's gonna say connection not private. And if we do actually open it up, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna work. Yeah, nothing here yet. So this is one of the applications that we need to enable HTTPS to even access. And then once we do that, we can go back over here, give it a refresh, and now we could go ahead and log in. Temp pass one, two, three. And here we are. This is Nextcloud. You can see it's running perfectly fine. Most of the stuff is running kind of within Docker. This isn't the uh, Nextcloud all-in-one Docker instance, but it's running that way nonetheless. And you can see if I jump between various pages, performances, fairly decent, even though it's the uh, one CPU node. And just kind of show you how it looks on this end. So I'm gonna go to the other tab to our actual remote system here. Do a sudo docker container ls. And here we could see all the various containers that it's actually running. I'm gonna zoom out here so we can actually see everything. We can see Nginx, we have certbot doing some of the SSL heavy lifting for us. We have some of our wiki stuff. We have some of our Nextcloud stuff. Overall, this is probably one of the better ways of uh, using Docker without actually having to use Docker. <laughs> And of course, this is a great tool for people like me who kind of know what they're doing, but for people who really know what they're doing, this is still a great tool because you saw how easy I was able to spin up some of those. And if you're developing your own applications, they actually have right here, Captain Simple Apps. These are just examples of various applications that they set up. So for example, let's open up uh, node.tr, uh, download the file here, open it up. You can see it's a simple application, pretty standard layout. And to actually import it and get it in there, we have the captain definition. And if we extract just that, for example, go to documents, extract it there. There it is, captain definition. And you can see it's a real simple file of how to actually template these for Cap Rover. So with that, I'm gonna leave links down below to everything you saw the uh, documentation, their website, some guides for Linode for setting up domain names and things like that, as well as a link to my latest post here under community. I will be kind of monitoring this and checking out some more of the things you guys have recommended. Again, big thank you to IRL Curate for uh, recommending that application. It is awesome. With all that, I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.